Uh-huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. <laughs> One and only, Steve Harvey. <laughs> Got a radio show. Well, all right. I learned something. And it, it's sharing time. And I am uh, ever appreciated. Uh, I do appreciate God for all that he allows me to learn in my life. One of the best lessons I've learned is that hardship teaches you some great lessons. Challenges brings about some of my best results. I think what I'm trying to say is in every challenge and hardship, every setback, I've learned something so, so valuable. So here's here's what I've, you know, I've, I've known this, but I, I've just learned it at a different angle. Appreciation and gratitude is the key to having more. Now, I don't know how that sounds to you, but I, I can't tell you how true it is. God being fair and just as he really is. He really is. He's a fair and a just God. What's most beneficial to us is he happens to be full of mercy and grace. And I'm telling you something, man. I've probably benefited from his grace and mercy more than anything else. I mean, really, man, if it wasn't for him just forgiving me and then for him just touching my life the way he has. I mean, I'm not I'm not here in this position today. I'm just not. But a funny thing has happened along the way, even to you, if you look at it. Is that your genuine appreciation and gratitude has been the key to you having more for your continued blessings and for making room for heaven to open up and pour out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. If you look at it, see God being a fair and just God, which he is, why would he put more on you than you can bear? If you've noticed everything that's happened in your life, if you're still here, you've made it. You know, forget how rough it was, got that, but you made it. Forget what it sent you through and it how it made you feel. You made it. Now, what makes people give up and you hear about people committing suicide is they leave the God out of their life. And they start allowing that other voice to control. And if it's really true that God never puts more on you than you can bear, as long as you stay connected to God, you can get through anything. But you lose that connection. You lose that communication. You lose that relationship with him. If you're not having a relationship with God, then who you having a relationship with? Now, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't but two forces at work at all time. It's good and evil. It's positive and negative. It's God, it's Satan. Now, this, this is at work all the time. So if you're not being positive about everything, you leave room for negativity to step in. If if you're not trying to be righteous in your way, then you allow evil to step in. If you don't work on your relationship with God, come on now, look who you letting step in. So now I'm, I'm asking you to understand that God never puts more on you than you can bear. Okay, now that we got that clear, that's a fact. Okay, now with that fact in mind, let's go over this right here. Why would God, being as just and merciful as he is, put more on you than you can bear? Example, if God is giving you blessings and all you're doing is complaining about them, you're never showing any appreciation or gratitude about it, why would he give you some more stuff to be ungrateful for? Why would he give you some more stuff to complain about? Why would he give you some more stuff that you would not show any more appreciation for? 
I mean, this thing is real simple, man, ain't it? If you think about it. So a lot of times, man, when I was going through my positions of not having and and wondering and all like here, I ended up checking myself and going, man, I'm not even showing any gratitude or appreciation for the things he has done for me. Start showing some appreciation and gratitude because it's the key to having more. It's the key to continued blessings. It's the key to the windows of heaven opening up and pouring out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. It's the appreciation and gratitude of what you already have. As minimal as it may appear to be right now for you, it is still what you have. But if you've shown no no, no gratitude for the minimal, why would he give you the maximum? I mean, I'm just really just trying to put it real, real simple so I can keep understanding this thing right here. So let me give you an example in my life. I had gotten so busy at one point that I had began to complain about how busy I was. Now, this is true because I, I am busy, but it ain't the busy part because I asked to be busy. You know, I asked God to give me opportunities and for, to make a way for me. Well, in that you got to do something and you got to get busy. But I, w- I began to complain about the busyness and how busy I was. And I noticed that a couple of things slowed up for me. So I had got to the point where I wasn't showing real gratitude for it. Well, I looked up and a couple of things started slowing down. And then I had to catch myself. And I went, wow, man, you have got to start embracing the fact that you are this busy. Embrace the fact that what all comes along with it, because to whom much is given, much is required. You got to start embracing the requirement part if you want to continue with the giving part. So I changed my attitude. I caught myself and I started thanking him and showing real gratitude for how busy I was instead of complaining about how busy I was. And then guess what? It opened up the windows of heaven and some more blessings got poured out. It just works that way all the time. For everybody, for me, for you, for everybody. So listen, y'all, again, your appreciation and gratitude is the key to having more. Your appreciation and gratitude is the key to continued blessings. And your appreciation and gratitude is the only way that you can get those windows of heaven to open up and pour out these blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. You got to act like you're glad for what you got in order to get more. You feel me? (laughs) Let's go. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. I am back. The show is alive and well. Thanking everybody for holding it down. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Positivity, motivation, inspiration, entertainment, uplift, and just about any other thing that need to be done and handled in the morning. That's what we about to do. Who going to do it? Moi, Shirley Strawberry, Carly Pharrell, Mississippi Monica, Junior, better known as Kill Space, or really better known as Junior, and the legend that is <laughs> Nephew Tommy. Ladies and gentlemen, all is well. Junior, what's on your mind? Well, first of all, welcome back. I'll be glad to have you all, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> Traveling yesterday. That's the day. Thank you all. Yeah. Let me uh-huh. ask you this. Uh, I, I know this is crazy. You know, I got an aunt who don't do well with technology and, and all these problems, and it just sound like you. About what age you think we should be through with technology? Like, what age you think y'all should just not have to deal with it? Y'all well, I don't it. think it's going to happen that way anymore because you'll be archaic. I can tell you that the, your trouble with technology begins at 50. <laughs> From For me, uh, yeah. technology started giving me trouble right around 49 50. i was fine right up until smartphone burberry i was good flip phones i was good burberry is a fashion line you mean black that's that's part of the reason right there i had very much confused the two and could not understand 
Why is these people that are making these shirts and stuff bothering me with this damn device? <laughs> and uh, that's when it began for me, man. All the invention of the smartphone was yeah. when it started, you know, telephone, iPhone. You know, just iPhone turned into smartphone, and that's when the problems began. And I, I don't think that we're going to be able to get away from technology at this point. No. no, I no. made it my mission this year to become a little bit more tech savvy. I want to have a couple of announcements to make. I just learned last week. Now I've been able. I know how to forward a text to somebody. I just oh, hold the text yeah. down, and then I go down to where it says more, and I hit more, and then I hit the arrow and send it who I want to. But I just learned last week how to copy and paste. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. Look that right at there you. was a fascinating discovery. Copy and paste yeah. game changer. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what I did. I took some bank information to put it in my safe on my phone. You know how you have a security to keep yeah. all your passcodes and everything. And I can't remember all them passcodes. So I took some very important documents copied and pasted and put it in my safe and put it in there and then my face ID quit working because it don't work out the country sometimes <laughs> and yeah. I don't know the code that opened up the damn safe <laughs> so now I done locked it in there and I can't open it so I got some real problems going on right now <laughs> All right. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we're going to start the show up with the nephew and run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to start your morning off with the nephew and run that prank back. What you got for us, Nev? Wet rose. Wet rose. Mm. Cat dog, if you would. Hello? Hello. I'm trying to reach Miss uh, Sister Tanya. Sister Tanya. Uh-huh. Let's see. Who's this? Hi, Sister Tanya. This is uh, uh, Brian. I'm I'm uh, representing the youth, and I, of course, you know we're already having the uh, the fundraiser on Saturday. And I would like to know: Are you going to be um, Are you going to be available to come out on Saturday? Because we got pretty much most of the most of the choir. You're in the choir, correct? Uh yeah. I never heard of anything about anything on Saturday, though. Well, we got most of the choir members coming out on Saturday. And we'd like to know if, if you're going to be available on Saturday to come out and participate in the fundraiser for the children that's going on their vacation next year. Oh, you said all the other choir members? I never heard anything from the other Yeah, choir most, uh, all of the choir members. We probably have about 95% of the choir members coming out. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm free on Saturday. Okay, now we're doing from 5 to 7 on Saturday. So are you available 5 p.m. to 7 p.m.? It's only two hours. Yeah, what you say your name was? Brian, I'm sorry. My, 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 they, they call me Brian. Brian, they call me B.A. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Did I meet you at the church? Uh, I, I, well, I just joined about three weeks ago, and they've already given me an assignment. So I, I, I majored in marketing in school. So they're trying to get me to, to, to take care of the uh, children and their vacation that's coming up. So we put together some things, a great fundraiser. And, you know, the choir members have been very receptive. You were the last one for me to call, and, and I wanted to make sure you were on board with us. Oh, okay, yeah, I just never heard about this, so. Now, are you able to bring your choir robe on, on Saturday? Yeah, are we, sing, are we singing a song? No, 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 you guys are not actually going to be singing a song. Uh, what it is is that we're, we're having a, uh, uh, and I'm glad, I'm so glad that you're, 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 you're ready to participate in what we're doing. So I want to, first of all, say thank you. First and foremost, I want to say thank you, okay? All right. I can bring my robe. I just... The robe. What, what's going to happen is you guys aren't singing a song, but we're having a wet robe uh, uh, contest. A what now? A wet robe contest. You're talking about like a, a wet T-shirt contest type of thing? Well, it, it, it's not a T-shirt. It's a robe, so you don't have a, a T-shirt on. What, what uh, we need you to no, do is we need no, you to... No, 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 no. Not in the church. <laughs> You talking about the whole Listen choir said they're gonna do a a, a a a wet robe contest? You said a wet robe right. contest? I heard of a um, a wet t shirt contest. That's not that's not the same thing though, right? Well, no, it's a little bit different. What it is, you don't have a t shirt on. You actually have your 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 choir robe on. 
and you don't have anything all, uh, underneath it. You don't wear any clothes underneath it. What we do is we we're going to wet clothes. all of all of the ladies. Listen to me. We're going to let all, wet all of the ladies down, and the sexiest one oh. that's uh, oh, wet no, with no, their no, robe no, 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 no. on is going to win five hundred dollars, and half of the money is going to go to the children's vacation. Uh, Hello. You talking about a, a wet T-shirt contest in the church? No, I'm talking about a wet robe contest at the church. Oh no, I'm not finna uh, get in there and and and, and be naked under a it's robe. It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be out it's gonna be you out. You talking about back. being naked under a robe? We need you to be completely naked under your robe, you and we're gonna wet everybody robe? down with a water hose. And the finest one is going to be able to uh, to win five hundred dollars and two hundred and fifty of that. Half of that money is gonna go. To the children's uh, vacation. Hold on, hold on. What did you say your name was again? My name, my name is Brian. Dude. No way. After three weeks, that they gonna put you in charge of something. I don't understand why there's a problem with you trying to pitch well, in and help out the children. Because I don't even why know who you are. Why why you I don't know who gave you my number. They're trying, they're trying to create. They, they're trying to accomplish Excuse something. Me. And you don't want to help me. the kids. I want to help the kids, but I'm not going to get up there in no choir robe. I'm doing my best right now, not to cuss you out, because I'm a woman of God. So you're too good to be naked under your robe. Is that what you're saying? You're too good I'm, to be naked? Look, I don't have to explain myself, but I'm not going to be naked up in no church. You can't do that for the kids. I know you're not about to tell me what I can and cannot do for no kids. Now, I don't know who gave you my number, but I think you need to figure out who else to call for this, because I'm not going to be a part of this. We called all the other choir members, and they don't have a problem with it. You're the there only no one way that's got a problem. You all the choir members. What are their names? What other choir members did you call? That would have said we, they would have we, done we, some nasty We call, we call sister, sister Bridget in the choir. Sister Bridget didn't have a problem with it. Ain't no sister Bridget in the choir. Look, look, look. Do you know, I don't know do who you, you know think you're talking Davida to, but I think the, you need to get off know, this sister, phone. Do you know sister Davida in the choir? Hello? Yes. Do you know sister Davida in the choir? Yes, I know sister Davida. Okay. So, so if sister Davida said, that uh, Sister Bridget and Sister Rachel didn't have a problem doing it. Why do you have a problem doing it? I'm not about to be naked in a church for kids. You're not getting and naked in the church. You're going to be in the back part of the church, and we're going to spray you down with a water hose on your robe. That's what I'm we- not going to be up there. This is disgusting. Well, Tommy said you would do it. Tommy said you didn't have no problem doing it. Who the hell is Tommy? We don't even have a Tommy at the church. You keep making up all these names. Tommy is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. That's who Tommy is. Hello? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, that's not real? This is not it's not real, baby. That Nobody was calling you about doing a wet robe cut. This, you all right? Woo! I was going to go off on you. <laughs> you was already going off on me. Vita got me to prank phone call you. Oh, my God. I'm going to get her. <laughs> uh, I was holding my tongue. What you saying? You was about to cuss? I was about to cuss you out, right out. <laughs> hey, baby, I got to ask you. You got to tell me, what's the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio <laughs> show in the lane? Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a wet road. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Right. It's a wet. <laughs> no one knows. Road. Yeah. Wet road. Uh, wet <laughs> the Right there. Uh, right. There. Wet, uh. All right. <laughs> Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey, back in the building and ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, you guys heard about this. Lil Bootsy wants to have an adult prom, and uh, he is planning on inviting you, Steve, and Marjorie. Uh, plus, in other <laughs> entertainment news, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, you've been away for a minute. I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> That's what's happening you, over here. Yeah. <laughs> you going to the plus prom, Plus, in <laughs> other entertainment news, R. Kelly's new jail friend is the accused subway shooter. What? We'll talk about that. Also, in other entertainment news, we'll tell you about Ludacris's uh, graduation gift. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask okay. the CLO. Teeny in uh, Mexico says, I'm 71, and my husband and I retired and went to live with our son, his wife, and two children in Playa del Carmen. 
I told my husband we need to find our own house because my son expects me to cook and babysit. My husband said it's a fair trade, but he's not doing the work. Uh, how do I convince him to move out? <laughs> mm, I, I don't know what to tell you. Y'all sent me one. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know who made this decision. I can't help you. I'm not 71. I can't advise you on this teeny. Uh, I, I ain't never been in Mexico. I, I don't know what y'all doing. I don't, you know, I don't want to offend nobody by saying what we do. You been to do. Mexico? We all been to Mexico. Yeah, I, I ain't stayed there long enough to, you know, develop no <laughs> cultural there. habits or nothing like this. All I came away was liking guacamole way better down there because they make it different. And uh, that's all I came with. Okay, the enchiladas is the real deal down there. I don't know what they doing at Taco Bell, but it ain't what's going on. It ain't real deal, I can tell you that. Anyway, those are the things I came away with. And I want to avoid this question for uh, any council culture that might occur behind it. So I want to pass on this. Teeny, good luck with your life, you and your husband, and uh, with them wife and kids and stuff like that. I know. I don't know. How do you 71, convince them you to do? move out? That's I'm not convincing nobody. Know. I don't know why you're 71. You want to live with nobody any damn way. Uh-huh. <laughs> My kids don't want me moving in with them. I can promise you that. Because first of all, we're going to cut all this damn music off. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> like having friends. To music. So they can't come over here. So now nah, they're going to put me out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Sorry, Teeny. Moving on to Jamie and Clemson. Jamie says, um, I got married seven months ago, and my husband is a great man, but he has no filter. Hmm. He says anything that comes to mind, anything. He told my 12-year-old niece that her breath stinks and her father cursed him out. He is brutally honest at all times. How do I get him to be nice or be quiet, especially with my family? You ain't going to have to. You ain't gonna, he going to say the wrong thing to the wrong person. I don't know how he don't know this yet. You ain't got to tell the 12-year-old her breath stink. Why is you talking to the 12-year-old? <laughs> but you're going to say something about somebody's child, and they're going to handle it for you. Life has a way of taking care of itself. You're going to learn the lessons now, or you're going to learn them later. But you're going to learn all the lessons you need. Trust me, there is no elevator to the top. You have to take the steps. If you skip a step, you're going to get back on it. Obviously, he's gotten away th- without saying what he want to say. He just ain't said it to the right person yet. But that right person going to be the wrong person that day. And all these will go away. You ain't got to worry about him. Never all no right. more. Jamie, <laughs> seven months into marriage. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moving on to Amanda on Long Island. Amanda says, my boyfriend and I have been dating a while. And when we met, he said he was getting his ex's name off his chest. Um, The tattoo bothers me more now since we're talking about marriage. I got a temporary tattoo of a man's name and he thought it was funny. How do I get him to take me seriously? Mm. What she said, she put a temporary tattoo of a man's name just to show him what it was like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm assuming okay. so. Yeah. Well, he thought it was funny because he, he knew it was, it was temporary. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you know, here's the deal: you're not sleeping with him anymore until he gets the name off his chest. Because you ain't finna look at it, wonder about it, or nothing else. Ta-da! Tattoo oh, gonna gold. Get the cutting it off, man. Yeah, <laughs> with a butter knife. You <laughs> a butter Dang knife what? and some sandpaper. <laughs> I have it off this evening. <laughs> Ooh, that's painful. I know. Whoa. All right, uh, Amanda, you could try that or. <laughs> no. All right, you last at Home one, Depot Steve. trying to get it off? You know you're trying to get it off. <laughs> <laughs> last one, Steve. LaFay and Olney says, my husband and I love reality TV. But he has gotten way too comfortable in telling me who's beautiful, who's had work done, and who needs work done. When I confronted him about it, he said if I can have an opinion on the ladies, uh, so if I can have an opinion on the ladies, so can he. I enjoy his company, but not his commentary. What do I do? This is our husband now. I don't know. What y'all watching? (laughs) You know, y'all watching. (laughs) Y'all sitting up here watching all this that's going on. How he ain't going to comment. He telling you what he think. That's what he watching it for, the work. <laughs> but I can tell you right now. Comfortable. Well, let me tell you how the conversation going. We watching TV. I'm old. Uh-huh. That girl right there, she done had them breasts put on. <laughs> <laughs> well, Just saying everything. I know Which that one? Girl. Which one? Both of them. Both of them. She done had work done on both of them. She ain't just do the left side. She did both. No. Of them. <laughs> which girl? <laughs> oh, which one? Which oh, woman? I think, 
Oh, oh, about four of them, four or five girls. of them. They all do it, you know, because when they do the uh, recap, you know, the, oh, the, you yeah. know, the show reunion, oh, they man. all had that white powder put between their breasts, make them look like they separated and bigger. <laughs> and you know this how? I like, because I watch the show. I bought my wife some of that white powder, too. See if she can get that. <laughs> yeah, I bought her Don't some of that white powder. Don't you think you're a little comfortable with, with, you know, with noticing all of this? Oh, I'm very comfortable noticing As it. What you man? want me to, well, you know, we watching it. What do you want me to watch it but not see it? What you, how you want this to work? <laughs> I just want you well, to you watch have, it. Yeah. yeah do well, you have but to I, I, I am watching it. But, you know, I mean, they talking. But why are you talking? We can't even follow along because you. I don't talking. say nothing till the commercial come on. <laughs> we can fast forward that sometimes. You know, well, yeah. I, I, I take notes of who I think need breast, who I think need. You're you taking know, notes? Booty. <laughs> you know, I put it down on my paper like, who though. need their nose contoured. A lot of them girls' nose ain't contoured. They put them two stripes on each side of their nose. See that uh-huh. white powder? It don't just yeah. go on the middle of the chest. Uh-huh. That white powder go on each side of the nose. nose. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Lil Boosie told social media that he wanted to plan an adult prom since he missed his. All right, take a listen to his celebrity guest list, Steve. I woke up this morning with a prom wish list. God told me, Cardi B and I'll say, I'll say gonna put it on. Money bag and Ari, no, they gonna put it on. Candy and Toy, T.I. and Tiny. Ray J got to be in the building. That's my boy. Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox. Snoop Dogg and his wife. It's a dog prom, man. Right? P. Diddy. Bring young Miami fine ass. I've been seeing pictures. I don't know what's really, but I've been seeing pictures. Ain't too many city girls been to prom. Steve Harvey. Mr. Mr. Put it on. If you can't be in the building, send one of your suits, man. Send me a stylist. It's going down. A dog prom. <laughs> Booze, I'm coming, man. Booze, I'm coming. Hey, pimp. I accept your invitation. I'm coming. <laughs> Just to put it on, put it on. <laughs> but if you can't come, sit a suit. Sit a yeah, suit. Sit a stylist. A stylist. <laughs> Boozy, yeah. I'm coming, pimp. <laughs> All right, so save Lil. the date, Steve. Save the date. It's going to take place July 9th at uh, the Clark University gym. Uh, in, he for real. In Atlanta. He's okay, in Atlanta. Oh, he's for real. In Atlanta. Uh-huh. Ball to uh-huh. fall through. <laughs> boy, if I'm home, I'm thinking about going out the country there in that week. But boy, if I'm now boots, I'm falling through, pimp. I'm going to come, uh-huh. I'm going to come G'd up. I'm going to have my girl with me because. Marjorie always taking some damn prom pictures with me anyway. Might as well go on go to one. <laughs> I hated prom. my prom any damn way. <laughs> oh, man. Woo, I'm going to come up in there fly, though, Boosie. <laughs> Please film it. Oh, man. Please. Oh, man. That's All right. Uh, I can't wait to see that. Everybody in other entertainment mama. news. <laughs> man. In other entertainment news, R. Kelly is uh, facing life in prison when he's sentenced on June 15th. And until then, he's making the most of his time in jail in Brooklyn. For instance, he often performs for his captive audience in uh, one surreal example. Uh, Kells reportedly silenced a crowd in the visiting room at Metropolitan Detention Center when he stood in his jail fatigues and gave an acapella performance of I Believe I Can Fly. Uh, according to a source present for the impromptu concert. How about over that wall? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, even correction officers watched in stunned silence. He also sings while he's in his cell. After the convinced, uh, after the convicted king of R&B is making friends, uh, he's making a lot of friends. Uh, R and Frank James, a man accused in the Brooklyn subway shooting last month, uh, three sources said that the men get along famously. They eat together. They talk about TV shows, and they go to the wreck together. They are buds. The source said. Wow. So there you yeah. go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. his Doing buddy, lot, huh? Lot of saying. Mm-hmm. Well, Making you know, look. I mean, y'all. People. Let's be really fair about this. You in prison? You can't be real picky about who your friends is. Yeah. Yeah. You got you the friends who friend you. Yeah. You know, y'all all in there. Mo- mo- Nine, 85, 80% of the people are in there, 75. 75% of the people are in there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 25% okay. ain't done mm-hmm. a damn thing. So the reason they're right. in there for, you ain't got time to judge because you in there too. 
So I ain't really mad at who he be friends with. Okay. And I, I'm like this, man. Look, man, if, if you get convicted and you and you did something and you're doing the punishment for your crime, then that's all you can expect. You know, I, I ain't got to beat you no more, you know. You know, I wish him well. You know, I hope he gets through it, you know. You know, because, you know, you, you know, you got to pay for your sins. We all do. So, you know, I, I don't I don't really wish more grief on anybody. You know, being, being in prison is enough. It really is enough, man. The loss of liberty and freedom and choices, that's a major loss, man. So whenever people are serving their time, you know, I just respect the fact that they're doing it and just let it be. Yeah. You know. All right. Okay. Well, finally, in entertainment news, it's, it's graduation season. We know that hip-hop star and actor Ludacris gifted himself with a private jet as a graduation gift. As we told you, he recently received an honorary Bachelor of Science in Music Management degree from Georgia State University. That is, of course, his alma mater. Luda shared a video of his new plane with hashtag family upgrade in the caption. The new jet actually is an upgrade from the Hawker 700 plane he had before. And for the record, Luda has a pilot's license. Okay? Wow. wow. Yeah. Not really. Nice. To Private fly jet water and a license. Oh, I don't know. They just said he had a know. pilot's license. Well, he got a pilot license. Mm-hmm. Have you ever wanted to get one, Steve? What? A pilot's license? <laughs> no, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even like looking out the window half the time. I'm damn sure I ain't finna be up front. <laughs> <laughs> More space up there, isn't it? Man, I ain't got the nerves for that. We <laughs> landing, here come this ground. <laughs> you know, because sometimes, you know, on the plane, you know, you can hear 180. 80 feet, yeah, altitude 50 feet, mm-hmm. 30 feet, yeah. 20 feet. You know, you can hear it. Yeah. I'd be going, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be up here with this little stick in my hand. This ain't working. <laughs> I'd be pulling up too soon, trying to land All too right. soft. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, what article of clothing or footwear are you willing to spend the most money on? Well, we'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. What article of clothing or footwear are you willing to spend the most money on is the question. Well, in trending fashion news, the Balenciaga brand is selling a pair of torn up, messed up, high top sneakers. Forget this price. $1,800. Eighteen hundred dollars, <laughs> eighteen fifty no. no. to be exact. Uh, completely destroyed. These shoes are. I mean, they look crazy. All right, Steve, is there? Have you seen these shoes, guys? Yeah, I saw. Their sneakers. I saw. Yes, they look uh, crazy. <laughs> they look they dirty think and nasty. Gonna buy that. And... Dog, dog, dog. They ain't gonna be able to keep them shoes. Right. People huh? are gonna buy them for sure. They're gonna buy Tommy. them. Tommy, they're not oh, gonna yeah. be able to keep them. Mm-hmm. Huh? People gonna, people really gonna buy spend. for the conversation. Boy, do you know what these people are into? Look at me, see me, ask me, look at me, watch me. We in that world, right? That, Boy, let me tell you something. You ain't gonna be able to keep them. They gonna sell out, man. They gonna be collectors' items. <laughs> when they did the story, uh, they they had already. Uh, this one guy had already bought them. And he was walking on them. He said, "Yeah, yeah, I like them. They're cool. Once I have them on, everybody's gonna buy them." He's some sort of fashion guru. But uh, they look crazy. So, Steve, the question to you is, is there an article of clothing or footwear that is no budget as far as you're concerned because you love them so much? Well, I mean, it's a limit to everything as far as I'm concerned. But Mm -hmm. I will spend... What's the most you've spent on a suit, Tommy? $3,000. Suit being made. Expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Custom made. And and, and, and and I don't care if it go out of style or not and uh, how big I get. I keep cutting it and changing it. We're going to wear that damn thing. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's expensive for a suit, you know. How about you? Mm-hmm. The most? Yeah. Probably Come on, 20. give me this shocking ass. Number. How much? 20. Probably what? 20. God. 20. <laughs> for a suit? Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I don't Jack, know Jack, I... Jackie would have left me. Uh-huh, this yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. What about What's most you spend about... for a shoe? Oh, I know what Junior. Yeah. Junior, how much? A shoe. For, for, for a suit. For, for yeah. a shoe? A suit. A suit? Oh, oh about 
custom. Okay. That's All right, Junior. That's, that's yeah. good. Uh -huh. 1750 custom. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Got a few of them, but I'm not. Shoes. How much for shoes? Different. How much most for a shoe, Junior? Quick. Quick. 750. Tommy, quick. Come on, H.R. 3,000. 3,000 for a shoe? What? H.R., come on, boy. H.R. got on $3,000 shoe. H.R., come get them, yeah. What's H.R.? All right. Uh, <laughs> coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, the teenager suspected of killing 10 people in a in an alleged hate crime in a Buffalo supermarket Saturday was uh, brought to a hospital by state police in June of 2021. Now, get this. He was brought in for a mental health evaluation after expressing his desire to carry out a mass shooting. This is according to law enforcement officials. The racist terrorist Peyton Gendron, 18 years old, was brought to a hospital by state police last June and released. Least he was released a day and a half later. State and federal law enforcement didn't pick up further intelligence on Gendron uh, before Saturday's massacre. The store where the sh shooting took place is in a largely black neighborhood of Buffalo. Eleven of the people shot were black, two were white. The killer, Gendron, had three weapons, an AR-15 on his person and a rifle and a shotgun in his car. The shooter's car had White Lives Matter written on it, according to a bulletin circulated among law enforcement. This is crazy right here. So he went to a mental hospital to be evaluated for this very crime that he committed. And they let Crazy, him go. Crazy, right? A day and a half later. Well, I mean, what are they yeah, going to do? Yeah, it was released. He didn't commit What'd a crime. What'd you say, Steve? So they're going to let you out. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. I mean, you know, keep an eye on people like that? I mean... I mean, you know, we we don't have the manpower to do that. That's what they're no. going to say. It's mm. just it's just heartbreaking. He planned yeah, this. That it could. He drove three and a half hours. He planned mm -hmm. it. He wrote about it in high school. He went to a mental institution. And you, we can't do nothing until they actually kill people. To to avoid, yeah. I mean, all the signs were there. All the signs were there. Well, the uh, white kid that got off, whose mother drove him to the rally with the mm -hmm. gun. Kyle mm -hmm. Rittenhouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. He yeah. killed some people, and he got off. Yeah, because yeah, he cried on the stand. No. Yeah, right. they have a different set of laws and rules for them. A mm -hmm. former president. And this one yeah. right here, I'm just anxious to see how this plays out. I don't see how this boy don't go to prison. It'll and, be a and, real and, problem. And, It'll be a real problem if that happens. Yeah. And uh, have pled not guilty. <laughs> yeah. How, how does yeah, that because work? they have to prove. Yeah. In court, uh, President Biden will visit the site of the shooting today. The president said on Sunday that our hearts are heavy once again, but we are our resolve must never, ever waver. So that's from President. So Biden. what is our resolve? Just, gun reform, you know, gun control. Yeah, just yeah. Regulation with social media. Men, mm -hmm. I don't know. Something, Steve. We got to do something. Yeah. This we country I mean, will never, ever. Stop guns do gun control or gun reform. Mm -hmm. They making too much money and the NRA yeah. spends too much money on the Republican conservative party mm -hmm. for the second amendment right. We will never ever. Money. And this will be an ongoing problem. The only way this problem ends, if this starts happening to some of the people's children who are accepting money laws. from the NRA. Mm. Because then those mothers, see, because a mother got love for their children, they don't care nothing about your money. Until something happens to the politicians' children who are accepting money from the NRA and then has to be faced with the reality, is this money worth the life of your children? then that answer will become a resounding no, and the mothers and their wives will make sure of that. Until that happens, the beat goes on. Because, Steve, wow. up until now, the answer has just been more guns. If I had had a gun, then I could have stopped some of all this. If I had had a gun myself, you know, that's usually 
usually the answer more guns yo which is unfortunate you know yo i'm sick i, I'm I don't i don't this. see this country ever reversing that stance no no so. it, because you see what's it happening keeps more happening. guns yeah. more guns yeah. you know <laughs> they they loosen the restrictions on on gun purchases all of that it's it's it keeps going in the opposite direction all right, we're going to switch gears here, lighten things up a bit. Coming up next, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today, and the subject is the pastor's pride and joy. Hmm. We'll get into that, find out what that's all about in just a few, because right now it is time for the nephew here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us today, Neff, on the menu? <laughs> well, all over the country, it's graduating time. All yes. over the country. What if you got a call and they say you ain't graduating? You. Ooh, child. Hey, man. <laughs> graduating. That ain't the call you want. You to put your time in, your years in, hard money been put in. You ain't graduating. Cat dog, if you what? Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, Trevon please uh this him who is this uh this is uh my name is joseph i work over in student affairs how you doing today i'm good how are you i'm good listen uh you're supposed to be um this is your fifth year here at the university you're graduating and um in the next seven eight days am i right yes sir i'll be out of this joint <laughs> okay listen i'm giving you a call we got a bit of a problem here uh that we want to try and discuss with you and maybe we can get you over at Student Affairs and come in and have a meeting with us, but we wanted to bring it to your attention. Now, you took a, uh, one of your last subjects was English, uh, and you had an English exam with a, uh, you guys are writing an essay. Am I, am I, am I correct about that? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Okay. It seems that we got some problems here that the uh, professor there is actually insinuating that you may have cheated on this, on this essay that you've actually written. What? Cheated? No. Uh, no I mean, I it, it, from what from what he's telling us here at Student Affairs is that you may have uh, plagiarized some things uh, that uh, that were in your essay. Dude, no, nah, I didn't. I didn't plagiarize nothing that was in the essay. Everything is documented like it should be. So I don't know what you're talking about, especially uh, cheating on no exam or no paper, nothing like that. You must got me mixed up with somebody else. No, 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 not at all. You're actually Mr. Trevon, correct? I mean, that's me, but I didn't cheat on no exam. Oh, no paper okay. for that matter. Okay, well, let me let me try to bring you up to speed here, Trevon. What we're going to need is we're going to need you to actually come in and talk to us over here at Student Affairs so we can try to get this thing rectified. But I will let you know, it's going to take a, a, a few more days longer than graduation. So as of right now, you're actually not going to be walking uh, and graduating with the rest of the students. What, man, uh, dude, man, you, nah, you got me messed up. What, what you mean I'm not going to be walking? Well, uh, uh, until we get this situation rectified here, you're not going to be graduating with the rest of the students. Now, man, uh, dog, dog, I don't know what y'all got to do, but y'all need to figure it out and find out what the problem is. Man, I didn't cheat on no exam. The hell are you talking about, dude? My family is coming down here, and you talking about I cheated on an English exam. The hell, I look like cheating on an exam, for, and I'm getting ready to graduate. Man, now, y'all need to fix it like right now, like today while we're on the phone. We can't do that. It's a little, it's a sensitive subject. And like I said, it seems like it's plagiarism. I mean, you know, if we can get you to actually come over to Student Affairs next Wednesday. Man, that, you, man you got me up. What you mean next Wednesday, dude? I'm graduating in a few days. What you talking about next Wednesday, man? Like, why my professor didn't give me a call? Why are you calling me? Sir, this is not something that professors actually take care of. This is a student affairs situation. Now, and it's a very sensitive situation. Now, what we want to do is try to get this thing taken care of. And if you, if what you're saying is actually true, then you'll probably graduate okay, in okay, August so when man, we man, have the man, next... Man, uh, you, you got me... I'm telling you right now, this is some... You got me... August? Man, I'm graduating this semester. I've been here too long to go through some... My last few weeks of school, and you talking about August? Sorry, sir, sir, I, 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 I ain't even trying to hear, dude. I'm not trying to hear what you got you know, to say, man. I, I I'm not it. even trying to hear what you got to say, man. My family is coming down here from everywhere to see me graduate, man. I'm the first day to graduate from my family. You talking about some? Talking about I cheated on the paper? A paper, dude? A paper? Man, you got me up, man. I'm gonna work two and three jobs to see me through this school, and now I'm coming getting ready to graduate, and you talking about I. 
got to wait until August to graduate? Man, hell no. Nah. I'm on my way to the office right now, and you can tell whoever the professor is that I'm on my way, and he needs to be there, too. Sir, all I can really tell you is that man. we can try and get this thing rectified man, as early man, as next Wednesday. Like, man, what's your name again? And where is where's your office? I'm, I'm at Student Affairs. I'm Joseph. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I'm about to get in my car right now, and I'm about to come over there, and we're going to handle this today. And, I, and how you singling me out? Cheating on the exam or paper, man? What the is that? Sir, sir all they're saying is the professor man, saying that there's a possibility dude, of plagiarism here. Man, are you kidding me, dude? I've been here five years. I'm the first male to graduate from college, man. My grandma is 82 years old, and she's coming here to see me graduate. And you're telling me some about cheating on the paper, and I got to wait till August to graduate? Man, that Man, you tell that professor to come to your office right now because I am already in my car on my way to come to your office and we're going to handle this today. that man. You got me with I don't have any more room on my schedule to actually pull anybody in today. How you going to call me with the like this? Talking about you ain't got room on your schedule? Man, hell no. Mr. Whatever your name is, I'm on my way to your office right now. And all I got to tell you, all I got to tell you, and I'm telling you up front, it's going to be a problem if I ain't graduating in a few days. You got to deal with me. You got to deal with my family, my mama. We don't play this. Man, you got to stop. Sir, sir, I, I, I under, uh, uh, is there a possibility that maybe you plagiarized and didn't know that you did that? You, man, what the do you mean? The paper was over some that I already knew. Sir, can I, can I, can I tell you one more thing and then, and then I'll ask you? You can't tell me a thing. You already called me with some something I can't graduate with my class after I didn't been this for five years. The second place and study my off and you telling me I can't graduate until August? You ain't got to tell me. I, I, I do have one more thing I need to tell you and then I'll let you be on your way, okay? Man, go ahead. Are you, are you, are, can I tell you what I want to tell you? Do go ahead. I'm telling you. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got prank phone call by your best friend, Brian. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Man. Dude, somebody going to f*** playing jokes like that, dude. Man, do you know how hard I worked in school to get out this five years? Five years. Man, I'm telling Man, you. Man, you are the first black male in your family to graduate from college. Yeah. You're doing it big, boy. Man, I know, man. It's been a journey, bro. I can tell you it's been a journey, oh. man. I got one more thing to ask you, baby. What is? What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Man, it's that Steve Harvey morning <laughs> show. It hurt me to do that. Wow. It really, it hurt me to do it, but I had to Ooh, do that it. that broke my it heart. <laughs> <laughs> when you bring someone to their tears, when you feel that emotion yeah. as a prankster, oh, yeah, that man. just, you don't know what that does. It's so, woo. It's some oh, that felt good. That felt so good. Did you feel the passion in his voice? Like, oh, his grandmama uh -huh. coming, she ate it something. Just, ooh. Just to, Not to, only to did you. I feel it, I was there. I didn't graduate till August <laughs> <laughs> from college. I messed up. <laughs> I felt this pain. <laughs> oh. oh, man, I love I love how stupid I am, man. I love it. It is a gift. Oh. You love being stupid, it. huh? July. July. Yeah, he already knows. July 1st, Columbia, South Carolina. I'm going to be stupid at the Koga. Performing Arts Center, Nephew Tommy, get your 4th of July weekend jumping off with a laugh. That's July 1st, Friday night at the Koga Performing Arts Center. You want to see Stupid in Rare Form, come watch your boy. I got it for you. Oh, my God. I'm good at what I do. I'm just, I'm just. There you go. There you go. Good at what I do. Yeah. What, is this, <sighs> what is this segment of the show called again? I forgot. Praise and worship. This is, <laughs> yeah. prank, this is prank praise worship. Praise and worship. Oh, Father God. <laughs> there might right. be a prank today. <laughs> Listen, uh, we're moving on if we can, if we can. Uh, <laughs> coming up next, it is a strawberry letter. The subject is the pastor's pride and joy. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Attention, it is time to register to vote in Nevada and New Jersey. Your deadline to register to vote is today, May 17th, if you want to vote in the upcoming primary elections. Pennsylvania voters, your primary election is today, so get out and vote. Please go to whenweallvote.org, okay? Whenweallvote.org. Let's do our jobs. Let's do our jobs, all right? Let's go. Let's vote. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. It is the Strawberry Letter. It could be yours. You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Subject, the pastor's pride and joy. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 37-year-old single woman and I was engaged but recently ended the relationship with my fiancé. Since then, he's tried to get me back, but I can't get past what happened with his secretary, Terry. Uh, My ex-fiancé is a pastor and he is running the church right now because his father has been ill for a while. He's a great pastor and the congregation has grown since he's been in the pulpit. All of the single women in church young and old would give me the side eye when they found out I was his fiance. I dealt with all of that. What I couldn't deal with is his attraction to his secretary. This younger lady has long red hair, beautiful legs, a great butt, and a beautiful smile. Of course he's attracted to her. But what I can't understand is why she would want to work at our church Monday through Friday when she could be doing something in her field of real estate. My mind got to playing tricks on me, and then my intuition kicked in. I tried to calm my demons, but two days ago, I lost it, and I drove up to the church at 8 p.m. My fiancé was in his office, and little Miss Secretary was in the bathroom adjacent to his office. He seemed surprised to see me, and he said he had just come by the church to lock up and make sure Miss Secretary got to her car safely. When she came out of the bathroom, her blouse was unbuttoned, so she quickly darted back into the bathroom. I pushed past him and ran and banged on the bathroom door. He yelled at me and said I was out of line and I was scaring her. He said she is the pride and joy of the church because she works for free and they need her. I told this old fool nothing in life is free and I dumped him. Are they fooling around? How can he be so naive? Well, a true statement, Uh, nothing in life is free, and both of them seem to be paying for this in uh, some way. Uh, And yes, they are fooling around, okay? You already know this, because she came out of the bathroom with her blouse open and uh, ran when she saw you, all right? They... (laughs) <laughs> that had fooling around all over it. You yeah, really pay, pay attention. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> that, her coming out of the bathroom with her blouse all open and everything. Come on now. That that just had fooling uh, around all over it. And you, you saw this with your own eyes. You ask, how can he be so naive? Well, how can you question what you know is right? He's not naive. He saw how cute she is, just like you and everyone else did. They did it, you know it, and you dumped him because of it. So why are you backtracking like you're getting confused and not sure what happened? He cheated. Don't make excuses for him. You did the right thing. You did the right thing. Uh, They've been doing this for a while. She works for free. He said they need her. She's cute, long hair, beautiful legs, great but he's at the church you suspected something you drove in there you saw it all right just move on now just move on you already dumped mm. him steve completely 100 percent disagree with everything shirley has said this is a shame this is why churches is falling apart today <laughs> because members have the mindset of shirley strawberry <laughs> always running too far with the information let's go over this letter as as she wrote it, the so-called victim quotations. <laughs> Subject, the pastor's pride and joy. Man can't have nothing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 37-year-old single woman, and you about to find out why. And I was engaged but recently ended the relationship with my fiancé. Since then, he's tried to get me back, but I can't get past what happened with his secretary. 
So now here's the situation, y'all. My ex fiance is a pastor, and he's running the church right now because his father been ill for a while. He's a great pastor, and the congregation has grown since he has been in the pulpit, thus proving that he's a great pastor. Then here comes the color commentary. All of the single women in the church, young and old, would give me the side eye when they found out I was his fiance. Right there. Mm. You got the apple of everybody's eye. So now they giving you the side eye. I dealt with all that. What I couldn't deal with was his attention to his secretary. Now listen to this description. The younger lady has long red hair, beautiful legs, a great butt, and a beautiful smile. Then she says, of course, he's attracted to her. Yes. Yes. I'm attracted to her, what you just said. (laughs) She has long red hair. Rapunzel. (laughs) Rapunzel is walking around at the church. What? The lady in the castle with the hair hanging out the window with the moat round it. That's who walking around the church with beautiful legs, a great butt, and a pretty smile. Mm -hmm. Man, new addition. They'll be of devote. Never trust a big butt and a smile. Why not? (laughs) (laughs) She has a of Steve's response coming up at 23 <laughs> minutes after the hour. The pastor's pride and joy is today's Strawberry Letter subject. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's <sighs> Strawberry Letter. The subject is the pastor's pride and joy. Right there. The pastor's pride and joy. Like I said, a man can't have nothing. He can't be prideful or joyful about nothing. Here comes somebody always want man to be miserable and unhappy. But the moment a man get pride and joy, here comes you need to be you need you, you need to be despondent and sad. Oh, skip your pride and joy. Let me ruin it for you. You a 37 year old single woman. We finding out why because you ended the relationship with your fiance. And he's been trying to get you back, but you can't get past what you say happened with his secretary. Now, your ex-fiance happens to be the pastor of the church, took over his father for his father because his father wasn't doing well. The congregation has grown because he's a really, really good pastor. And then uh, all the single women in the church, young and old, have given you the side eye when they found out I was his fiance. I dealt with all that. Now, she said, what I couldn't deal with is his attraction to his secretary. This younger lady has long red hair, beautiful legs, a great butt, and a beautiful smile. She said, of course he's attracted to her. Never trust a big butt and a smile. Yeah. Why (laughs) not? Come on, boys. Build and devote poison Poison, poison, poison. Mm. Poison if you a boy. A blessing if you a man. Mm. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, let's let's move on. But what I can't understand is why she would want to work at our church Monday through Friday when she could be doing something in her field of real estate. She trying to serve the Lord. You are trying to ruin this woman who is in here trying to serve the Lord Monday through Friday. That's Whoa. why churches get towed down now because of <laughs> members like Sister Shirley. Don't want this woman. I don't understand why she would want to work at our church Monday through Friday when she could be doing something in her field of real estate. She is serving yes. the serving Lord. It. Sacrifices. It. Right. My mind, the devil. My mind got to playing tricks on me. And then my intuition kicked in. I tried to calm my demons. See, she got demons in her. That's what tear the church down, <laughs> demons. So, so little demon. But two days ago, I lost it. I drove up to the church at 8 p.m. My fiance was in his office. Now, pastor, in his yeah. office, pastor. Worshiping, serving in, in the evening hours. And little Miss Secretary was in the bathroom adjacent to his office. That means cross the hall. Yeah. 
she wasn't even in the bathroom in the pastor's office. She was in the bathroom adjacent make where it, the make, women supposed to be. Make it plain. Now, here she, then he seemed surprised to see me and said he had just come by the church to lock up and make sure Miss Secretary got to her car safe. Mm. What a man should do. Yeah. When she came out the bathroom, her blouse was unbuttoned, so she quickly darted back into the bathroom. You know how many times I done walked out of the bathroom, my pants been unzipped or something, and I had to run back in there, turn what? around, face the wall, zip my pants up. It happens. It happens. Shirley, I'm going to ask you again to be quiet. I'm going to ask you, because I didn't interrupt your little raggedy answer. You're not going to interrupt but your my raggedy answer is whatever, okay. whatever. <laughs> now, her blouse was unbuttoned. She didn't notice it till she was coming back in, and the wind pushed it open. So she darted <laughs> back in the bathroom. The, the wind. What? You know, when you walk, the wind push it open. I cannot unbutton be quiet on it? This the man. wind unbuttoned it? No, she was in the bathroom getting unbuttoned. You know, when you're sitting on the toilet, you get hot sometimes. Like, I hang all my clothes oh. on the back of the hook oh, when I use the anyway. bathroom. I use the bathroom naked. I don't, I don't like, I don't like, plus I don't like my pants be wrinkled up down around by my legs. So I hang my clothes on the hook in the back of the door. Anyway, uh, she came out, she darted back. I pushed past him and ran and banged on the bathroom door. He yelled at me and said I was out of line and I was scaring her. You scared the girl. About she was in there using the bathroom, and now you want to tear the damn door down after church. <laughs> but see, what you left out was what you were saying. Half I come out of there, half I'm going to kill you. You scared her. <laughs> he said she is the pride and joy of the church because she works for free, and they need her. Sacrificing what she could be in real estate to serve the Lord and work at the church. And she is the pride and joy of this church. And you members are not going to tear her down and make her feel unwanted. I told this old fool, nothing in life is free. It is some things in life that's free. <laughs> There's a whole lot of stuff that's free. Government cheese was free. Potted yeah. eggs was free. Oh, God. Stamps was free. Yeah. I dumped him. Are they fooling around? How can he be so naive? How is he naive? He ain't done nothing naive. Leave him and her alone and let them worship and serve. Yeah. <laughs> Comment yeah. on Preach, today's boy. Strawberry Letter. You're welcome. And Steve Harvey FM on Thank Instagram you, Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming she can't up help how she looks. After the hour, it's sports talk. It's long red hair right and a great butt. Oh, she goodness. can't help that. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? All right, Uncle, welcome back. Back stateside, Uncle. Had you seen anything going on in sports when you was over there? Did you see? You catch any of the games? No. No. They don't, okay. they don't have basketball over there, Junior. Catch him up, though. Okay. Well, then, let's catch you up, Uncle. No, I don't know nothing, Junior. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went from knowing it all to nothing. Man, the Mavs. The Mavs and the Suns, man. The uh, the Mavs beat the Suns 123 to 90, so they're going to be in the Western Conference Finals to face Golden State. Uh, and then you got Boston and Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uncle, you got any picks? You got you want to see how this going to go? Well, uh, I just want to remind Tommy that he said that that series would be a sweep. I did. And, yeah, uh, oh, he did. It wasn't. And um, I predicted that the Suns would sweep. Uh, Dallas, that ain't happening. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. no. And uh, what? No, or did I predict uh, Golden State was gonna sweep Memphis? I predicted one of those. No, I think you did say Golden State was gonna sweep Memphis, but the, but yeah, the, that's what it was. Yeah. That, okay, but right. they won, but they didn't sweep. No. Uh, so now I don't, I don't know, man. I don't really. Boston is shocking. See, I can't stand Boston. Ever since in the 70s when they turned that school bus over with them black kids on it. I've hated Boston ever since. Okay. That wasn't a team, though, that did that. Though. It's the it city wasn't. he talked about. I don't give a damn who did it. If you got no, Boston in your name, I want you to lose. <laughs> the only time I cheered for Boston was when Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen, I wanted okay. them to get a ring. So that was the only time I was happy Boston won. 
I went right on back to hating them after they left. <laughs> <laughs> but now because of Tatum mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. them boys, they they nasty. Brown. But that damn Jimmy Brown, Brown man. and Hero, they ain't scared of nobody, Ooh. man. I ain't really got no dog in that fight. But I know out west, I can't see them whipping Golden State. But I couldn't see the Dallas Mavericks whipping uh, Phoenix either. So Here I'm going are. with uh, yeah. I'm going with Golden State. Them Splash Brothers okay. plus Pool is balling now. So yeah, okay. I don't I don't know who gonna come out the East, man. Cause I like Boston, but that doggone Miami boy. Woo! Well, we gonna see. Uncle, you know, game I think Dallas gonna tonight. surprise y'all. I think Dallas gonna surprise. Dallas? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Enough of these damn surprises. You got, you got Draymond Green. You got Poole. Well, we own in Dallas, and we not own in uh, Golden, Golden State. State. So, yeah, I hopefully. should pull well, for go Dallas. Just go Dallas. Yeah, I am. yeah. Start now. <laughs> I go really ain't got no dog in the fight, but hell, go Mavs. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, Let, let's go Dallas. Let's get Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In a video gone viral, did you all see the nine-year-old little boy? This was a little white boy, nine years old. Went up to a the home of a black family, banged on the door with a whip at the home of this black little girl. He was trying to say that he wanted to whip the little black girl. Now, this happened in uh, Dallas, Texas, Kaufman County, near Dallas, Texas. The mother of the little black girl opened the door, told the little boy to get away from her door. Then the father of the little black girl went over to the white boy's house to try to talk to his father. A gun went off. T- t- just take a listen. You better get your ass from off my porch beating on my door like this. I will call the police. You need to leave. Don't you ever beat on my door like that. Go. Okay. All we want to do is just come talk on, to you out, civil. Come on, come on, you want, y'all, that's the problem. You and your kids want to play Your son came over here. Y'all are so violent. Your son came over here. Baby, please. Your son came over here with a whip. Bring his ass over here again. Please. You have a gun. Come over here on my side and see what the Okay, okay. So, so, Carla, whose gun went off? Who whose gun is it? The the white man's gun. The the boy's father, because the black okay. guy, the father of the black girl, went to mm. his house because the little and, black, the little white kid showed up at his house with a whip in his hand, asking for the little black girl. And when the little white boy left the house of the black girl, the mm-hmm. whip he used the whip to scratch her car. The mother. That's car. how the car oh, got scratched. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's why she's talking about the scratch on the car, and that the neighbor's camera has mm-hmm. footage of the little boy doing that as well. So it's yeah. just I don't know. It's just. Whew. It's so just what a is mess. case at now? Somebody went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> you need the, to know. The, <laughs> the white father went to jail because it was his gun that went off. Yeah, oh, he didn't. Okay. He didn't shoot it. He it went off. The gun went off. So he had it out. Yeah, that he means. had it out. Yeah. The yeah. black yeah. father just went over there to talk to him. The white guy told him to get off his property. Th- this is a mess, and it's an ongoing story. So you know we'll have to keep our eye on it. But the point is, is that you know. What is going on as we... I Let think your we child can do this. The yeah, nine-year-old boy we, think he can go knock on the door with a whip. With a whip. With a whip. What's, Where's what is racism? he being taught? What is well, he be yeah, coming he, from? See, yeah. that's, a, that's a taught behavior. Thank mm-hmm. you. It is. It is. But you got a whip in your hand, and you're going over there for whatever this little black girl did. If you show up at my house with this whip in your hand, I'm going to take all the symbolism, symbolism of racism and all that into consideration. Yep. And... uh. I'm going to go over there and snatch a natural ass knot in your dad. <laughs> you knocked on my door with a whip. Well, I'm, you know, I'm going to go over there and talk like the brother did. If you whip my daughter, it's a whole nother piece of activity. Yes. So let's just be grateful that didn't happen. But I think the brother went over there to talk and the guy had a gun. Yeah, you know, that's the bottom soon, line. 
But that's and he didn't like, believe that his son didn't right. do and it. He, didn't he wouldn't believe. even listen to the Regardless, guy. if a yeah. black man comes up to the house, you got to get your gun. Dog, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. everybody got a weapon. Your son got a whip, you got a gun. Well, that's that's yes. that's at the yep. house. Yep. Where your hands at? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. right. you can come out on the porch, we just going to talk. I mean, but your first reaction is, let me get my gun to protect yeah. myself. That's right. the problem. But we're yes. not. That's a whole nother yeah. Second Amendment that's yeah. not going to change. And so I don't, they not going to ever get rid of that law. You know, it could have ended you could, he, badly, he could have killed. Horribly. He could have killed somebody in his house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. He yep. could have killed someone in his house. I mean, but he has been arrested. The white father, right? That whose gun went off. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. His gun heard. W- went off. Uh-huh. Yeah, but we'll we'll keep our eye on this story. It, it it's gone viral. Oh, trust me, he out now. They don't get they don't stay in that long. Trust me, he out. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, All we're gonna move on. Coming up in twenty minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In trending art news, the Sugar Shack, you know, the dance hall painting made famous for appearing in the credits of the uh, uh, sitcom Good Times. Remember that? Yep. Recently yeah. sold at an auction for a record-breaking, get this amount, $15.2 million, okay? Wow. That's according Sugar to Shack? MSN.com. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Over $15 Ernie million. Barnes? Is that Ernie mm-hmm. Barnes? Ernie Barnes. Ernie Barnes. It's a 1976 acrylic on canvas piece that's showing jubilant uh, black dancers in a club. Was also featured in the Evans family apartment during the TV comedy Fifth and Sixth Seasons, and was used as and was used as the cover of a Marvin Gaye's hit single "I Want You." The painter, the late Ernie Barnes, painted the Sugar Shack from a childhood Hold memory. Huh? Where did they say they got the photo from? The pit, the art from? The original? Oh, it was sold at an auction. Yeah, they don't, they didn't say where they got it from. Really? It, but it was at the auction. Yeah. I got he a copy. I ain't stack. got no original. No. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know where the original was hanging. Oh, do you really, know? Steve? Uh-huh. I know whose house it's in, or wow. was it? In. That's why. Was I asked. It? Or was That's why you it? were asking? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, maybe he they... had some good pieces though. Ernie Barnes oh, was cool. Yeah, called. Ernie Barnes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but anyway, uh, Ernie Barnes painted it from memory, the Sugar Shack, from a childhood memory, uh, sneaking into the Durham Armory, a North Carolina venue that hosted segregated dances back in the day. All right, coming up 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play another round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time for another round of Would You Rather. Would you rather be criticized... Or would you rather be ignored? Hell, I'm both of them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and the you most famous one is on this show. He do both. He get both. He criticize and ignore. I don't, hell, Aw, that baby. <laughs> How long have you been ignoring me, Steve? How long many years you been ignoring me? Probably since birth. <laughs> birth? <laughs> Dang, he didn't even yeah. think about that answer. Yeah. Came <laughs> right out. Just Crystal rolled Clark. off his tongue. <laughs> Right, yeah. Uh, and your birthday's tomorrow, Tommy. When's your birthday? Yeah. Uh-huh. 18th. He's been ignoring you a lot. Don't ignore him. Ignore that, too. Yeah. He will not yeah. be ignored on his birthday, Steve. He will well, not. Uh, you get that birthday on the radio, and that's about it. You know, he, ain't <laughs> he got kids right. and the family. Let them buy something. <laughs> yeah. Would you rather be able to read minds, or would you rather have X-ray vision? <gasps> I'm going with X-ray vision. Oh, I've been wanting this since I was nine. That X-ray, them glasses <laughs> they sold in the comic book didn't never work because we could look through clothes. No, I want, I want your mind. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd rather read yeah. minds. That'd know what cool. you're thinking? Uh-uh. Yeah, it, 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 you know, hell, back in the day, if I could have read your mind, I knew if I was going to see any clothes anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know where that came you from. You killed two birds with one stone. Yeah, I was, if I can you read did. your mind, I know what I'm going to see you naked anyway, so uh-huh. you, you can work with that. Go from there. <laughs> two birds with one stone. Yeah. Well, let, me, let me change my answer then. I want to yeah. read mine. <laughs> we 
What you say? I would have saved me a lot of money. Yeah, I ain't thinking about it. I would have saved a lot of money trying to have x ray vision if I would have knew what you was thinking. (laughs) I ain't got to buy this dinner. Let me carry my ass home. Ain't nothing fit to happen. Yeah. (laughs) Would you would you rather remember everything you see, everything you see, or would you rather remember everything you hear? I do all of that. Yeah, you remember, oh. uh huh. Oh, he got a man. So That's if crazy, you had to man. pick one, I'm going with hearing. I, I go see. If I had to pick, I remember everything, everything I, I saw, everything I heard. Heard is learning, but mm-hmm. seeing is vision. So I mean, that's a hard one, man, because I. Remembering what I saw is what the inspiration is, but remembering what I heard is what I've learned. Mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna either or neither. I'm gonna lie to you here. And just, I'm gonna go with seeing, but I'm gonna remember everything I heard. Don't okay? care. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up in 49 minutes after the hour, our last break of the day, and some closing <laughs> remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, guys. Our last break of the day on this Tuesday. Yeah. On this Tuesday. This is it. Good things. Ooh, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This week is moving. This year is moving for yes, sure. It is. Oh, yeah. Year moving. <laughs> it is. This is May already. And um, Steve, you have some words of wisdom, some closing you know, remarks uh, you want to leave us with. You know, I've been very fortunate in my life that uh, God has afforded me a lot of grace and a lot of favor in my life. You know, um, I work hard. I I do understand that. I put forth a lot of effort because I do adhere to the principle that if you plan on being successful, it's going to require an all out massive effort. It's going to take everything you have. I thank God that I have been willing to do mostly everything that was requested of me in order to become successful. I'll just put it that way. I'm pretty sure there's more coming, but so far I've tried to answer the bell and answer the call. But with that being said, my life is still filled with a great amount of mercy and grace that God has done for me. Uh, Almost the unthinkable. And the reason I say the unthinkable, because oftentimes people say, hey, man, Steve, did you see yourself being here? And it kills me when people say, yeah, I always imagine myself here. Well, how? how? How did you do that? How did you imagine something that you didn't know was possible? Because what I've also learned is if you can imagine it, it's possible. It is impossible to think an impossible thought, that's impossible. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's impossible. How should I phrase this? Let me see. You can't have a thought that's not doable or thinkable or attainable some way, some shape or fashion because everything we have in this world, somebody thought of it. I'm not phrasing it exactly the way I want to because as, as I do most of my closing remarks, it's off the top of my head. But I do know one thing, that if it had not been for God's grace and mercy, I am not who I am today. I am clear about that. Somebody sent me something the other day that really touched me. He sent this to me. He said, God has a tendency of picking up a nobody to become a somebody in front of everybody without asking anybody. Hmm that it put tears in my eyes. And I sent it to a few people that I knew would understand it. Once again, he said, God has a tendency of picking up a nobody to become a somebody in front of everybody without asking anybody. And I'm telling you, man, if that ain't me, I, I just don't know what what is. Because I was just a nobody. That God, through his grace, picked me up and turned me into somebody. And he did it in front of everybody. And he didn't ask anybody. And I'm sure glad he did. And do you know something, man? We are all, we are all privy to that. But in order to be privy to it, 
you got to be willing to follow some instructions. And the instructions you follow can't just be yours. You hear people say all the time, I'm do what I want to do. I'm going to live my life where I can do how I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. That ain't how it work, man. Sorry. Sorry. That's not the equation to real success. That's not the equation. Because to whom much is given, much is required. There are going to be requirements along the way. You don't get it free. You just don't get it free, man. I've often said convenience is built through inconvenience. See, if you want to have a convenient life, the only way to have a convenient life, it it is built through a series of inconvenient things. And when I tell you a series, I'm talking about a life full of them. Don't sit up and think you're just going to have one or two, three or four inconvenient moments to have an incredible life of convenience because that's not how it works. You are going to have a series of inconveniences. You are going to be required to lay in it way longer than you want to. You're going to have to wallow in it way longer than you want to. You're going to have to deal with it way longer than you want to deal with it. That's what it is, man. That's the requirement. But in order to have a life of convenience, it is built through inconvenience. And if you want your life to be convenient, you got to deal with the inconveniences that come along with getting convenient, period. Sorry. This ain't no rule Steve Harvey came up with. This is life, man. You hear people say it all the time. If it's successful, easy, everybody would have it. That's the truth. So if you're not willing to be inconvenienced and you don't like being inconvenienced, then you can get off wanting the convenience because it requires the inconvenience to get the convenience. I'm sorry to tell you that, but I'm also happy to tell you that so it could clear up any confusion that you might be having. Oh, why am I going through this? Oh, woe is me. Because it ain't just, oh, woe is you. It's, oh, woe is everybody that wants a life of convenience. You have got to deal with the inconvenience. And in closing, I just want to say this. God has a tendency of picking up a nobody to become a somebody in front of everybody without asking anybody. Let the church say amen. Amen. Those are my closing remarks. Hey, y'all, talk to God. He'd love to hear from you.